wow, it's got you smell like outside and smoke. I just had a heater. <laughs> it just hit me all of a sudden. Well, I mean, I, w- I was forced into a speed heater. Speeder? Speeder. Speeder. How do those work? How do the speed heaters uh, work? Because you Suck. did you did come in here with uh, the smell. I didn't feel the smoke. I mean, I did not. I don't think he just put out the cigarette or threw it on the floor, the butt on the floor of uh, the workplace. But it really smells strongly in here, like his face smells like an ashtray. So I uh, I pretty much took down an entire cigarette in three drags. The last one was a master drag. Mm. It Ugh. was like half the cigarette. I was still blowing out smoke as I was walking into the studio. A Matthew McConaughey yeah. true detective drag. Yeah, exactly. The, the guys in the movies <laughs> always do a great job of having it in their mouth, pulling and puffing out yeah. without using their hands. And I've always, I've always envied that. Wow, it looks so cool. <laughs> what, were you blowing in the wind? Was it coming back at you or something? There are fans on uh, at the Clevelander down here. Only and they, So you blow the smoke out and it blows right back in your face. But I took the last master drag as that, I was that, opening I the door. I don't, I don't think that that's... I don't, well, don't stop them. I mean, yeah. but just... Wait, you know what, the, the new fans? studio is a no-smoking facility. Really? Oh, that's problematic. What are we going to do? We Stugat, you didn't smell. You didn't smoke a single cigarette. That you smoked many. Like I he, smell he many. Thing I smell put, many cigarettes on you. It's a very five strong in his mouth. smell. I, I've done five across before. I have. I've done it before. I did not do it here. I am telling you. I took the final drag as I was walking in. Okay, and it was so much smoke that I was still blowing it out by the time I got into the studio. I was running up the stairs. I mean, Mike said five minutes. Get back here. Where so, Where are you going to smoke? I don't know. There's an alley. Uh, there's an alley at the new place. There is? Yeah. Oh, I love an no, alley. Not, we're not on the first floor. He's no, I mean, no. he's got to go all the way downstairs. Guys, yeah, there's but... a downstairs. He'll, he'll make no, it work. Yeah, yeah, just dude, walk outside. The elevators, the elevators just take you wherever they want. You can't even tell the elevator where you want to go. You step in, there's nothing to touch in oh, there. Oh, it's like Willy Wonka. It is like Willy Wonka. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> what if this is Dan's secret way of murdering us all? Is that what Willy Wonka is? And, and then bequeathing his chocolate factory to like the smoking Gino. factory. <laughs> it would be Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy's gonna end up with the factory. Jeremy always ends up with the factory in this story, right? Who is gonna be the last survivor? Who's gonna be the one standing at the end after we've well, it's all gonna be killed, killed each other? Witty in a bathtub. <laughs> Why is Witty here? Noir. Why is, is Witty here? 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 I didn't I see him here. I didn't know. understand. I, I was like, is that for the show? Is but it not no, for the show? I, I didn't want to He I owes like 12 it. punishments. Witty just, does he miss us? Like, what is he doing? He's he, here for the factory, man. He's here for the free breakfast slash lunch. Right? That might be it. That's, That's what, what I'm here is. for. <laughs> he puts a smile on my face, though. I mean, That's how you he say gets, the yeah. uh, the free breakfast slash lunch. We are now serving both of those here. No, not on the same. Today's not a lunch day. It yeah. just bleeds over into lunch. It looks like it's lunch, even though it's Why breakfast. is today not a lunch day? Monday One of the- and Tuesdays are lunch days. Yeah, it's only yeah. live. Dan's playing bull yeah. Also, just, you, you were like, you guys get both of these? Why aren't you getting that today? It's like <laughs> The yogurt, though, well, if we're going to complain. I, 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 mean, I just don't know what the rules are. I just Parfait, see man. what I see. Look, I don't think people understand is we leave the Clevelander here and we have an assortment of memories here that are emotional. We got some top five lists for you. Uh, Stugatz is going to go today as we get maximum memory nostalgic about the leaving of the Clevelander. But. That used to be ESPN Deportes over there. They crammed those poor people in here during the pandemic. I don't know where they went. They all lost their jobs because ESPN is cost-cutting. So we got that space. I'm assuming. I don't know. know I'm assuming they lost their jobs. They lost their place here. That didn't have running water over there, and now it has breakfast and lunch and a kitchen that we are now uprooting because the last two years have been uncomfortable and hard. But there's I, breakfast and lunch over there I kind of, on a couple of the days. It doesn't seem like the schedule is very organized. I have a question. Well, and, and I just like oh to say, Lord. we were at the studio yesterday. Great studio. Can't wait to get there. All of that that you have to say on the front end. Here's my question. We were told they had to take out that kitchen first thing because they were going to install it in the new studio. That was so, my question. So we've been living in a world where, like, we just have an open pipe in the ground that you have to pour things down where the sink used to be. And then when we go to the studio, it's an entirely different kitchen. We had white cabinets here, and we had this wooden countertop. And then yesterday we go, it's a stone countertop. It's black cabinets. It's an entirely different kitchen. They took out the kitchen for nothing. Where's the air fryer? Because I kind of feel like the air fryer should have been the last thing to go. 
because yeah. it's small. They you didn't can just even put it on your arm. Anything. It's it's an entirely new kitchen. The air fryer is not there. No. Dude, what the hell, man? Uh, you're looking at me. Machine. This is my department. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what the hell, man? That's my it's life. Your company. That's my business. That's, my, it's, that's my. It's our what are you company. Complaining about this? It is our company. It's not my you do company. Everything. I'm yeah. not in charge of the running pipes. Well, it's not me. I, th- it's your company. Look, look. I'm not in charge of what I'm about to ask because you all had the same question. Where's the kitchen? No. Why the fuck is Winnie here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and where am I going to smoke? I mean, Winnie's, hey, Winnie. Winnie, Winnie's like Jim Nance. He gives an emotional goodbye and then he shows up three days later on our TV. <laughs> Hello, that's, friends. That's where Pablo Torre is right now. He got a eulogy at ESPN. He's going to be on all the ESPN shows. It's like hey, goodbye's not goodbye. They just took you off the one internet show nobody was watching. He got emotional. Did you hear his, his last uh, podcast? He was yet. St- he still is smiling though. Somehow in that podcast, <laughs> he did a deal. giant plug for his website. That, that that was the emotional goodbye. Check me out at pablotore.com. Substack. I can't blame him though. That we used the last three weeks of negotiating with ESPN to just carve out the subscribe, idea. Subscribe, we subscribe, get to subscribe, advertise subscribe. every day on your air that we're still around, right? What's <laughs> Pablo doing? Like, is is he working? Does he have our air fryer? That's a great question. Yeah. Somebody tell me. What is Pablo doing? <laughs> Probably I don't yes, run that the part. There are, I'm not in charge of everything. You guys make me in charge of the pipes and the air fryers and the kitchens. Which part do you run? Just so we're clear. Yeah. Trying yes. to keep you and Skipper from killing each other. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. So far successful. Not doing a great job. No? I mean. An Someone... assassination is coming. <laughs> I don't that know which one gets to who yes. first. I, I, mean. don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. It's one of the many things I worry about. Dan, um, we, Love need, you, Skip. we need you to settle a debate here because it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen on the internet if it's happening back here on this room. So we need to get ahead of this now. Yeah. It's a controversy. Yeah, it's totally fair. It's, yeah. sp- it's spreading throughout the studio. It's a controversy. That Why are you I, here? Why are you here? You're, it's great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're thrilled to have you back. Hello, can, lads. You just Hello, shot, friends. You, the last couple of weeks. <laughs> we're still paying you, right? You're not coming up because nobody's paying you. You're being paid, correct? Yes. To? Uh, I'm here on a uh, freelance basis to oh, uh, that's why facilitate a transition. Oh, nice. Ah. It's the most corporate bullshit I've ever heard in my Dude, life. What was, does that mean? He was, just, just, email he was just chilling in the break room. He's just, just eating breakfast. Yeah, let's say. Actually, I, I had not partaken in any of the donuts yet. I have not. It's, it's a delightful spread now. I'm glad the spread has gotten much better since I've departed. <laughs> it has. <laughs> we freed yes. up some cap space. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't departed. I mean, who's the mid-level exception on <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> So, Dan, uh, you're in the midst of this controversy that that people it's the talk of the office right now. And it will be on Twitter as as soon as we start putting out clips today. Uh, People think you're wearing the same clothes as yesterday. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to tell you. I was wearing pants yesterday in a different shirt. In a different cap. I'm wearing a it's different... a Nike polo again. People are mm. people are worried if you're wearing the same clothes. No, I've got, got four of these in yesterday. different colors. Atta and boy. this one, no, and this one, I, I mean, no. I've become my dad like this. My mother makes fun of my dad. My dad found a few things that he liked and bought 20 of them. And, uh, yeah, well, so I have. It's called the Homer Simpson. But I am wearing literally every single thing I'm wearing, including my sneakers, is different Ooh. today. And you guys are accusing me of wearing. Uh, there's nothing on me. That I know is what the just same. happened. I, I know will what say happened. yesterday's shirt was a black shirt. I'm looking at video right now, and today is a navy blue. You, you, it's yeah. a dangerous game yeah, going dark navy blue, yeah. black back to back. Black days. or navy? Right. It's like yeah. judges. We, we've we've the internet. We heard you. Mm-hmm. He's good. He, yeah. yeah, it seems to be good. Be good. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. I'm glad everyone is there to judge everything about me. No, the double not. chin, the get... beard, the eyebrows. Uh, it's why I don't trust any of you with my vulnerability. And I have well, to keep... We're I have just to be, getting ahead of you. I have, I have to, to be a ninja at all you. times because yeah. the internet and everyone is going to be there to judge away. I'm and trying I think to get ahead of this. Dan has gained weight and is not caring about what he wears anymore. <laughs> You're yeah. getting it too. I feel like just every angle. Listen, don't feel bad. I have a rotate. I think everyone here has a rotate. I have a rotation of clothes. I'll wear like the same four oh. things over and over again. Like on any given week, I'll probably wear the same exact clothes as the week before, just on different days. Right. Exactly. Because this is how it works. Yes. And I think we've done this before. But you, you know, you dirty your clothes. You put them at the top of the hamper. You put them in the washer, and they're like, "Oh, clean clothes. Let me put this on." And it's just the same outfit over and over again.
Yep. That, that's the worst part when you did your laundry, but then because the thing that went last into the laundry basket mm-hmm. becomes the thing that comes out first when you wear it. Like it, when you check your bag at the gate. No, that, absolutely not like that. That's that doesn't work. And so many people are like, actually, Billy's right. Like what? When you fly one of those little puddle jumpers? No, on a real plane, if you check it at the gate, it goes to the carousel. No. Yes. Last in, first out. No, that's not yeah. how it works. That's why they got those orange tags if you're priority, because those are the bags that come out first. But yeah. after that, it's last in, first out. No, man, because when they unload it, they got to put it on a truck. The truck. So last in on the plane, they pull out, put it on the truck. It's the first in on the oh, truck. Oh, it gets buried, you're exactly. saying. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Mm. You're at the gate. They just walk it down the stairwell and toss it in. No, I'm talking about when you fl- when you land at your destination oh. and they grab it from the belly of the plane. Maybe. It's the first bag they grab. Goes to the bottom. But then it becomes yeah. buried by everything else on the truck. We digress. Dan, this shirt is truly the same shirt. I mean, you're playing a dangerous game. At least you said four different colors. I what have are the four, o- yes. What are the other colors? Charcoal? Gray, dark, uh, d- black, uh, a different, darker gray, and blue because I have to go with slimming dark colors. I play oh, that game, too. Most of my stinks. clothes are just shades of blue. <laughs> to, conceal, <laughs> to conceal. To conceal the, the, the mocking. No yes, white, huh? yes, I just have to drape <laughs> these circus tents on me that are different colors that are comfortable. I would go black, gray, navy, back to that darker gray. You know, throw in a red every Just now moving and forward. Red. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I love no, no, The Kool Aid yeah. Man. I look like Andy Reid. Yeah. I got to be careful with the reds. Yeah. The reds. Yeah. I got to go dark. What about white? Uh, why are you the guys? White, why, no. why, why are you guys doing this? Going yellow. To me? Why? Why yellow? is everyone doing? Like, this? I think. I think we all share in your pain, though, Dan. Like wearing yeah. white. Like I. I would yeah. never wear white. No. Roy, if he wore yellow, people would be like, "Oh, the sun." Yeah, exactly. No, wow. <laughs> it's it's uncalled for. <laughs> so mean, man. I have so many leftover Zion jokes. I got to get them out somewhere, man. Okay. <laughs> all right, go do it in the penalty box. Oh wow! wow. Go, uh, get all of them out in there for two minutes. Oh, uh, who's going to be the last in the penalty God. box? Uh, time, time. Uh, time now for Stugatz's top five memories of the Clevelander garage. Uh, I still don't understand why Witty's here. Now, with great urgency, he scatters out to have more bacon for breakfast. And Mike, uh, get, I, I mean, or whatever you guys are eating. Oh, Mike's oh, back. Juju's here. Wow. Juju, he wants to be executive producer, too, by the way, Mike Ryan. He doesn't feel like he's getting a fair shake, Juju, on this executive uh, producer well, audition. I want to put him in front of the chair, see what he's got. Mm. Top five things you will miss, won't miss about the Clevelander Garage. What's the list? Top five things I'm going to miss about the Clevelander Garage. Number five. Wondering if someone sat in my car while we were recording because the seat settings have changed. It's happened. That that actually happened to me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I've caught I've caught people in my car before. <laughs> yes, I did. When in, in Seventh Street. Not this one, but uh, the one three blocks away. I stumbled upon a woman in my car as her friends were playing lookout while she was just sifting through my stuff. And I was just like, hey, sup? You guys got you guys to use that lock button. Yeah. Well, that's how I was doing it from far away, like just to scare them away, make them scatter. Here's my theory. If you can still open the door if I'm close enough with my key and I feel like but you can't start the car. And I feel like you have to be like literally within arm length of the car. You that's how, listen, somebody can't get into your car. If that's you're like how quick people away. move in this garage. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm I'm getting out and someone else is getting in, and I don't notice because there's a cloud of smoke in front of me, like I Indiana mean. Jones. Yep. Pro tip: You leave your doors unlocked. So if you're gonna steal something, go ahead, get get whatever you want, brother. Just don't break my windows. Oh, wow. Oh, right. yeah. well, yeah, I yeah. don't remember the details. This is an upgrade for Stugatz because when the original Miami Arena was built, Stugatz went to his car and there were people smoking crack in the front seat of his car. Multiple people yep. smoking crack. I don't know if they broke your window or not to get in though. They did. They broke my window. They were smoking crack. I saw them from a distance. I called the cops. The cops came and did what they had to do and and i was on my way with a broken window so an upgrade the <laughs> clevelander garage from the crack. from the starts in sports in miami sports he upgrades to simply people invading his car when he doesn't want them there well wondering i'm just wondering because the settings change slightly it's like they're trying to get them back to where they originally were but i can tell number four the blood 
You're going to miss the blood? I'm going to miss the blood. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Gives it some charm. And it's a mystery. Yeah. Like, what happened here? I, I always do that when I find a pair of underwear or a single shoe or sock in the garage. What happened here? What's the story? I bet you there's a good story that involves this person <laughs> leaving their underwear here. Number three. The used condoms. <laughs> That's probably where the underwears, the underwear got lost. Number two. The empty plastic bags with cocaine residue. <laughs> Little tiny ones. You see them, right? Yeah, that, that bag can only be for one. <laughs> Mike used the bag. garbage can. Number one. <laughs> oh. It could also be for a spare button. Oh, oh yeah. I'm really going to miss number one. The two little birds I say hello to every single day Rocky and Apollo. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really gives you hope. <laughs> Are they parrots? There have been parrots landing on my balcony recently. Just what kind birds. of birds are they? Wasn't the just little piece two of cute little birds. Human so feces. Yeah. That was OLI. OLI, <laughs> human feces. Urine. This is very exciting here. We have a genuine hero on with us, Francis Zuber. We were talking about him yesterday. Zubes. He is the skier. Thank you, Stugat. You got uh, it. The heroic skier who, in the viral video, noticed something off to his left, and it turned out to be a man who was stuck in the snow. I think it's a man. Uh, it sounded like a man stuck in the snow uh, that he was saving, and I just can't believe any of what I saw. So Francis is with us now, and Amin has on a whiteboard uh, five different ways that a person, any kind of person, and he's taking bets on this in the studio, <laughs> can respond to being called a hero, to yes. being called a hero Publicly, I don't know what the odds on favorite is. They have not shared with me what his response might be and what they're betting on. What can you tell both Francis Amin and the audience before we get to him about what the betting odds are looking like without giving away what his response might be? We've got an even money. We've got a minus 1,000. We've got a minus 500. We've got a plus 10,000. And we got a minus 250. Great. Not at all confused. There are only five ways to respond. When someone yeah. says and claims you're a hero, there are only one of five ways to respond. And so we have all five of them. Mm -hmm. And we think, at least I put my bet in, and I think Billy did as well. I know Amin has. Mm -hmm. And so we're just we're interested to see how he responds because there are only five. Ways. All right. Cool. We're, we're, way less confused we'll now. We'll do that. Uh, we'll do that at the end. Uh, thank you guys for bringing this kind of life to the beginning of the segment. This is what happens when the both of you get involved with something. Both of you go sit in the penalty box. No. Oh, oh, no. 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 I'll do it. Dan kind of asked for it. I'll do it at the end. It's my fault. I asked for it, it because is. Amin wanted to do it. And go, both of you, sit outside. Uh, no, they would uh, make it so much worse. This has to be really confusing for our guests. Francis, yeah, Francis, you're a hero. <laughs> you are a hero. Francis yes, knows what we're talking hero. about. <laughs> Francis. Thank you. That's, that's really kind of you guys to say, well, I guess I, I should put the uh, the bet to rest immediately, right? As we want, do you want to do no, that? No, I want it at the yeah, end. Yeah, well, no, at the end. And I mean, yeah. Stugatz Dan is out. No, no, no. Right. Then it's unnatural. Dan, right. Dan, 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 you're doing this all wrong. Yeah. Hey, Francis, no. you, what do you say to yeah. people that say you're a hero? I, I tell them thank you. I, I do really appreciate it. It's very kind of them to say. Um, I personally, I just think that anybody uh, in that situation would have done the same thing. Have fun, Dios. <laughs> Ask your dumb questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want money. Is that the the favorite caches? Favorite favorite, favorite yeah, caches. Favorite. Minus one thousand. We laid a lot of egg. Wow. This is, I believe, the first uh, national and international interview this hero has done. Uh, Francis, even though you think everybody would have done the same thing, a whole lot of people would have just kept on skiing. So uh, tell us what you saw out of the left side of your eye. Uh, set the scene for us on you were just going skiing with a GoPro, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, that day I was I was there uh, originally. I was there solo and met up with a buddy and you know since there were two of us we decided to go into the back country we all had the gear with us and all that stuff and uh it was really like i think my first or second time in that zone uh, in that particular area there my buddy that i was with knew it so i felt comfortable being there with him and uh 
you know, we took off skiing through the trees there, as you see, and I was going a little quicker than I would have liked. I, like I said, I'm familiar with the area, so I just kind of like jump turn off to the side there and dump all my speed and sort of reset. And uh, when I go through that second opening of trees there, I just caught that little glimmer of uh, of red out, out of the uh, out of the corner of my eye. And I knew it was weird because, you know, we're out of bounds. Ski patrol wouldn't mark anything there or anything like that. So it made me stop and take a second look. And, yeah, that's where I saw uh, Ian, this is his name, uh, saw a snowboard sticking out of the snow, and I saw that it was moving. So I knew not only, you know, there's definitely somebody attached to it, but they are alive, and I don't know how long they've been there for. And uh, if you take an avalanche safety course, they tell you that you only have 15 minutes in the snow immersed like that before you'll suffocate and die. So I, I knew I needed to get them immediately. So take me through, you see a snowboard. It is red. It took you a minute to get over there. It seems like it would be hard to get over there. How long yeah. How long was Ian under that snow, and what happened? Did you have any indication that it would be even possible that snow would fall that much on somebody nearby? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we've been trying to figure out how long he's in the snow for. I'm sure it was a lifetime for him uh, being, you know, in the pitch black like that. You can't hear anything. You can't see anything. You're running out of air. So, you know, it's, it's hard to say for sure, but probably somewhere in the neighborhood of five to seven minutes, um, you know, which is more than enough time to, you know, have an absolutely terrifying experience and think you're going to die. But, um, yeah, I mean, pretty much uh, – it, tree wells are kind of the silent killer. This is actually something that happens all the time in the backcountry and in deep snow. Um, so I, I certainly knew it was possible for something like that to happen. You know, I've, I've heard of it and I've seen rescue demonstrations and stuff like that. And I, I was really just in shock that this was happening, like, you know, to me in that moment, like, oh my God, I am here. This person is in a tree well over there. I need to get to them. Like, it was, there was certainly a moment of shock. Uh, and then I knew that I needed to act immediately when I shouted up to him and, he didn't answer, um, you know, because like I said, I didn't know how long he'd been there for. Do you know how the snow happened to him that way? Is that something that could have happened to you nearby? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, that, that could really happen to anybody. You know, those tree wells kind of uh, around the base of the tree there is much softer than the rest of the snow on the slope. Uh, it's kind of like quicksand almost. And if you sort of fall into it, you know, you just kind of keep falling down because it hasn't condensed like all the rest of the snow. So, you know, and our, our base here at Mount Baker, we get to, you know, maybe 15, 20 feet of uh, snow depth throughout the season. So, you know, if he didn't have a snowboard on, he could have just kind of essentially fallen through to the bottom, um, you know, all, like and just disappeared basically into the snow. It's a horrifying thing. So the snowboard and the foot attached to the snowboard is the thing that saved his life because otherwise he keeps – he's being held up by the weight of the snowboard uh, barely above the snow? I, you know, I, I can't say that for certain. Um, I mean, the more you struggle in those tree wells, the more you sort of sink down into them. It's kind of like quicksand as well, just to sort of, you know, give another nightmare analogy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if he if he had gone into that thing head first without a snowboard on him, was sort of just wiggling sort of through it. Yeah, I mean, it's totally possible he could have completely disappeared into it and, you know, never been found until the spring in theory. But, yeah, I mean... Usually the most common thing you'll see with somebody stuck in a tree well is exactly what you see in the video there, where it's somebody sort of face first in the snow, you know, just their skis or their snowboard sticking out. Could you hear his screaming? No, you, you can't. Uh, when, you're, when you're in a tree well like that, you can't hear anything. I mean, if he had been yelling, I wouldn't have been able to hear him. It's, it's also just kind of like being, being encased in concrete as well, because once you move around in the snow, it sort of condenses around you. Uh, and then you can't move at all. I mean, he had a radio with him, a walkie-talkie, and uh, he could hear his ski buddies that he was with radioing to him, uh, asking where he was, and he couldn't move his hand to reply. <laughs> oh, my God. So this is horrifying for a number of different reasons, obviously. Oh, but yeah. you, you, when you see the initial flash of color, did any of you think, I'll just keep going? Like, that's nothing? That can't be what I think it is? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, it, I don't think it did. I, it's kind of hard to remember it specifically, but it was enough to just make me stop and, you know, say, wait, what was that? Like, you know, I just, I knew something was weird about it. Um, and yeah, it was just enough that I needed to stop and take a second look. And yeah, once I saw the snowboard upside down, like that, there was, there was no chance of me continuing on. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't leave somebody stuck like that. But when did you notice that the, that the snowboard was moving or that, that this was a really panicked, important few minutes you have because you don't know how long this person has been under there in a uniquely horrifying position? 
Yeah, I mean that was it was pretty immediate that uh, you know I, I recognize that the snowboard is moving. You can see if you if you look closely, like right when I look up hill, you see it kind of moving back and forth. So I could see that pretty clearly from my perspective. Um, you know, obviously indicating that he was conscious still, he was alive. Uh, you know, under under the snow like that. Any point when you start digging, are you saying I'm not going to get here in time? I this this might not happen quickly enough. I have to assemble a shovel. This is all very hard to do. Right. Yeah. Oh, there was definitely that moment um, when I really not so much when I was digging for his uh, for his airway there, but when I was getting to him, the process of uh, going uphill in snow that deep. I don't know if you were, you know, maybe some of your listeners have had to do that before. I've, I've certainly had to do it just kind of like maybe going down a run I didn't mean to and having to back out of it. Uh, it is exhausting. Uh, and, you know, when there is that urgency like that, it is absolutely terrifying because the, the snow that week, I think it had snowed somewhere in the neighborhood of four feet of this, you know, low density, really light snow. And we're in the back country, so it's even deeper out there. There's pretty much no bottom to it. And, you know, you hear me start cursing when I step out of my skis uh, because I, I sort of just sunk into the snow and I thought I had just really messed up the whole thing and that I wasn't going to be able to get to him in time. So that was, I mean, that was really the scariest part. And then once I managed to get to him uh, and he was still moving, I knew that he was going to be okay and that within the next minute or so I'd be able to dig him out. Did you talk to him at all? Because it sounds like you would have some curiosities, but you don't know how long he was in there. You didn't dare to ask because of how uh, you, you were protecting the person's uh, privacy, Ian's privacy? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I initially didn't share the video uh, kind of like for that reason. And also, you know, we didn't really uh, know what we wanted to sort of get out of the video. We kind of decided that it's a good thing to share to make people aware of uh you know, the dangers of deep snow and tree wells and stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, yeah, we once I pulled them out, we definitely, like, chatted for a little bit and debriefed. You know, I mean, first thing I did when when uh, I got him out of the snow was I gave him a big hug and, you know, just said, I'm glad you're okay. And uh, he thanked me for, for stopping for one thing and then, you know, said that uh, you saved the life today. How emotional was he? Uh, he was, uh, you know, a lot of people said pretty calm. And I, I actually said the same thing to him when I pulled him out. I think he might have been a little bit in shock. Um, you know, just a minute ago, he was he thought that he was about to die. He was just kind of waiting to die. And then next thing you know, somebody's taking him out of the snow. So I think he was a bit in shock. But he, I mean, he's also a very experienced snowboarder um, who has been, you know, partially buried before and had to dig partners out. I mean, nothing nothing to this level of uh, severity. But, he, you know, he's been in a similar situation before. Um, so it wasn't, you know, the most unfamiliar thing to have to deal with. From the physics of it, though, he's totally upside down, correct? He's head first. Oh, yeah. It's the length of his body. The only thing that's out of the snow is a single foot, but the rest of him is upside down. And does and he knows he's upside down? Like, he knows, does he even know which way to dig? Yeah, I mean, he, he knew he was upside down. Um, he knew he was, you know, in a really bad situation. He didn't realize how bad it was, um, you know, because when you're stuck in a tree, well, really what you're supposed to do is, remain as still as possible and try to slow your breathing down uh, and save that precious air that you have. And if you have an air pocket, especially try not to move um, because that can really increase the survival time that you have underneath the snow. But I mean, when you, you know, when you're sitting there for a couple minutes and you think that your, uh, your buddies are going to come dig you out and then all of a sudden you hear them on the radio asking where you are, you know, that's going to certainly induce some panic and make you try to move around and get out in your own accord. And he tried to do that. And uh, he sort of, you know, uh, eliminated the, the little bit of air that he had there and uh, kind of made things like possibly worse for himself, which, I mean, anybody would do in that situation. Absolutely terrifying and panic inducing. So, and then after, after like struggling for a minute, which you kind of, I think is where I saw him initially, uh, he was just kind of remaining still again, trying to slow his breathing down and, and just, you know, waiting and hoping. And then I, that's pretty much where I showed up. When you get over there, and I understand there isn't a lot of thought in here, you're just reacting. But once you start with the digging or disassembling things, uh, if I ask you from the position you're in now, how long do you think this is going to take for you to dig uh, and to get to his face, to get to his mouth? Your response, if you had been clear and not thinking, would have been what to me? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I... The process of digging to him once I was there, you know, I, I would expect to be about a minute, minute and a half, which I think is what it was. Um, I, you know, I really thought the whole video was way longer than it really was. I thought I had been struggling to get to him and digging for, you know, somewhere between like five and 10 minutes. I couldn't believe when it was only two and a half minutes. Um, 
but yeah, I think, you know, the process of actually digging someone out usually is about a minute and a half or so, unless they're uh, buried in an avalanche or something like that way down there, which that could be longer. Was there any worry, like, this isn't the right angle, then you put some snow back on and did it again, so you got the clean video? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> you know, it's hilarious. I've seen, a, as this has sort of gone viral and gone to every corner of the internet, I've, uh, some of my friends have been sending me their favorite comments that they've seen on on the various reels or whatever. And, uh, you know, I've seen people say that this is staged or, or whatnot. And man, I couldn't imagine drawing the short straw and uh, being the guy who has to go in the snow <laughs> if we were to stage it. <laughs> it's, yeah, because it seems, it seems totally terrifying. Does Ian uh, give you a gift or anything? Is it just a hearty hug oh, and a thank you? Or uh, maybe, maybe better. Ian is the man. No, Ian, Ian is the man. He's been extremely gracious through this whole thing. Uh, he's taken my wife and I out to dinner and, the beers and stuff like that and uh this past saturday we went skiing together at baker and uh you know he's he's born and raised here he's a he's a local and an absolute ripper so uh he showed me around to all his favorite spots all the secret stashes that i would have never found on my own so yeah i'm super grateful to him as well he's he's been nothing but uh but great throughout this whole thing salute to you brother but that is not enough, not enough. you need a yeah. first name child. Yeah. You need christmas gifts for yeah. life a shovel endorsement no. rosh hashanah yeah. Ooh, yeah. whatever the the zuber shuffle Sh shuffle. Yeah. a shuffle a shovel endorsement is good the zuber shuffle yeah. i'm telling you there is an idea here where we name it after you your mm -hmm. last name the zuber and 8020 my way you good Hey, that sounds good. If you guys make it, and you know, I'll, I'm down to endorse it. Well, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> uh, excellent work by you, Stu. God's trying to uh, get a business opportunity out of this. You made some money already Trouble. by correctly cashing the bet. What yeah. were the other hero options on what he could have responded? Uh, all right. We had just doing what anyone else would do. That's the one we already covered. No, the one we already yep. covered was doing what I hope someone would do for me. Yep. Sound very similar. They're different. They're one different. of them is I do what anyone else would do in this situation. The other one is kind of reciprocal. I do what I hope someone would do yeah. for me. Yeah. We're getting uh, caught in the snow here. There's, uh, I'm no hero. There's, I didn't think, I just reacted. That's a good one. And then this one was running at plus 10,000. You bet your ass I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Francis, Francis, let's do it. Let's uh, let's cash that bet at the yeah, end here. You're a hero, you Francis. You bet your ass I'm a hero. Thank you, Francis. <laughs> I can't I can't say it, but thank you guys. I'll let you say it. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> the Zuber shuffle shovel coming to you yes. from Stugatz and Francis Zuber. You guys keep saying the shuffle like it's a little dance. <laughs> like I know. Shovel. Yes. yes, it is. <laughs> the Zuber <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> uh, thank you, Francis. Catchy, actually. Hey, thank you guys. Appreciate it. You guys have a good one. Amin has been working, Stugatz, very hard for Metal Ark Media. He is grinding. He's on Metal Arkers over here. He's doing basketball Illuminati over there. He's doing Cinephobe. He's flying all over the country every week. And his podcast, he's aspiring to make a podcast different than all of them, different than what you normally get. He's about to get a new show where he's going to be able to do even more around here. But he says he's got a theory that sports podcasts mm -hmm. can only be about the same five things. <laughs> that everything, the, the market is totally saturated right now. Everybody wants a microphone. Paul George has a podcast. Antetokounmpo's brother has a podcast. Paul George's friends call him D. Yes, thank you, Juju. Uh, I need to put you in the executive producer chair at some point here. Mike is uh, hogging it. Witty still has angles on it for some reason. But... You're saying that all five basketball Illuminati's are not this, Cinephobe is not this. Well, Cinephobe's not a sports podcast or a sports show, so it's exactly. What is your... Cinephobe? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Cinephobe is the podcast where Zach Harper and I watch movies that are poorly rated on Rotten Tomatoes and try to ascertain whether or not they're accurately rated, or maybe they get a fair shake. At Cinephobe, it's produced by Anthony Mays. You get it wherever you get podcasts. And this week, we drop a twofer. We've got Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood drops tomorrow. But earlier this week, we dropped the CT5, Cinephobe Top 5s. And this is where we rank top five things from Cinephobe history. And we did CT5 Top 5 Worst Dancers. So be on the lookout for that one. Is uh, your new show a movie show or not a movie show? No, the new show is going to be on the DK channel. It's going to be a basketball show, an wow. NBA show. But it, like Basketball Illuminati, it's going to be very different 
from anything you've ever seen. It's not going to be the five things that sports podcasts are allowed to be about? Um, You know what? It might be, but it's just going to be delivered a little differently. I'll say that. I don't want to give away too much, Dan. You know, it's like we're still kind of an R&D, and I'm, I'm very kind of uh, avant-garde with what I'm trying to do what? and pull off here. Like point guard. So you have a I'm list a of five things that a podcast could be about. Sports, sports podcast. podcast. The only, and, yeah. the, the only, only five, five things. things. The only five. And you're starting a sports podcast that won't be about those five. Well, it's things. not a podcast. It's a television program. Number five. <laughs> well, it's, it's not okay. Uh, it doesn't. You could talk X's and O's. It's not a top five list. You're saying, uh, yeah, but it can be. Well, I'll make it one. You talk, talk X's and O's, like, oh, oh, they should have played so-and-so, and oh, I can't believe he called a run instead of a pass, and that's, you know, that's a lot of sports talk radio and podcasts, right? Number four, talk transactions. <laughs> Who's getting traded? Who's gaining where next offseason? Where is he going to be? Woods draft pick? How was the protections on that? Right? Those are all transactions. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep. Number three, talk medical. <laughs> Really? Six to eight weeks out with the thing is it's a sprained MCL, ACL, a PCL. You know, there are a lot a, of people. Meniscus. Gamblers, I guess, would want that yep. information. Is correct? he playing tonight? Is he playing tonight? There you yep, go. Fair. That's ga- that's a gambling information podcast because I can't imagine a whole lot of people are like dying for medical. Hold information. on, you don't listen to. Uh, oh, Anthony Davis rolled his ankle. He's out. Like the, every anytime anyone gets hurt, we obsess over it and we talk about it. Oh, and we become doctors all of a sudden and try to figure out when's he going to be back. Is he back for the playoffs? Is he back for the play in? Is he back for the second round of playoffs? Maybe by game three. Oh, that, that happens all the time. What's the next one? Number two. Talk cultural slash racial slash political dynamics. The Dan section. Bingo. And number one, and this is right here in Stugatz's wheelhouse, something I like to say, talk comparison shopping. <laughs> Stugatz's wheelhouse right here. Yeah. Who's better than who? Who's the top? <laughs> did it is? Who's the number one quarterback in the league? Who's this? That's all comparison shopping. It's all mine. It's all yours. Yes. And it's a lot of sports podcasts and radio shows. There's no six. There's nothing. Well, can, there's fantasy, but you can lump that in maybe to help. That's not sports. That's, oh, that's transaction, too. No. no. It's like, what about life observations? Yeah. Like, you know, I was on an, I was on an airplane this week. Uh, so walking down, you know, like topics of just life, life topics. Oh, we did a whole segment on putting kids to bed earlier, like life stuff. That's why we're different. Ooh, I have. Can I pitch you a segment on your show after the break? <laughs> no is the answer. After the break. <laughs> nice tease. <laughs> 